Oh, thank you for inviting me. Um, do you have, can you see my screen okay? I can see your screen, perfect. All right, great. Sound is good on my end. David, I think you can hear, um, we're double checking here to make sure that the sound is great on both ends. Yeah, uh, yeah, sounds good to me. Okay, terrific. Okay. Uh, well, um, good, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark from Right Line Trading. And uh, I really have a lot of information to present to you today. So I'm going to move sort of at uh, not 100 miles an hour, but maybe at about 60 miles an hour. Um, so buckle up, because I also want to show you uh, uh, live charts and, um, and some um, and, and our, our profit uh, uh, month to date right off of my Ninja Trader back end. So I want to get to everything. So, uh, but I really want to start with this disclaimer. Um, just hang on one second here, I'm sorry. Let me just go back to the slide because what I want to do is I want to uh, just um, snag this so I have, I have a copy of the video presentation. Okay, just move on to all signals and trading opportunities provided both orally, written, or electronically to disclose to vis visitors or subscribers are for educational demonstration purposes only. Right Line Trading takes no responsibility for any participation by visitors or subscribers within futures, forex, or stock markets, nor for any profits or loss that may be incurred. Uh, participating in trading in, in the markets, as everyone knows, involves substantial risk. It should be understood that a person can lose a substantial amount of money. Therefore, the participation in these markets is not appropriate for everyone. Carefully consider your financial position before making a trade. Uh, you may want to do your own due diligence. Um, right line trading, we, here at Right Line, we're not registered financial advisors and we're not licensed commodity trading advisors. And with that said, uh, let me move. I mean, just a little bit about my background. Uh, I'm a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I was uh, actually a Phi Beta Kappa graduate of the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm a former, I was an abs at Penn for 15 years. Um, I was a former professor at Jefferson uh, College of Philadelphia. I published close to 15 peer reviewed articles in uh, first tier journals, and I've been involved in the markets for over 20 years. And right line trading is the product of over a decade of analysis of uh, price action market structure and indicator al algorithms, and we base everything on mathematical model. Um, I mean, it's, it's a mathematical way of, of uh, systematically determining what forces govern the, mo govern the movement of independent variables in a closed system, which in uh, the markets are price. So what we want to know is what forces are brought to bear on price in any financial market and on any time frame that move price either up or down. That's the only thing that matters is the direction of price and, and in which direction it's going to move off the right edge of the chart. And I'm just going to skip past a lot of this because um, I'm, I'm going to run out of time. Now, what you're going to see is that um, the charts are formatted in uh, modified Unirenko candles. Now, the system can be traded on any kind of candle time, tick, range, Renko, it doesn't make any difference. And it works on, like I said, any financial instrument in any time frame. But we've created what, what are known as modified Unirenko. And um, they're a little bit different than any other type of candle. Um, I think it really defines uh, trend in a, in a really, really nice way. And I'm going to go on to talk more about that. Now, I'm moving kind of fast, and I really apologize, but I really want to, this is sort of the, uh, I've got to the meat and the potatoes yet, and I want to, really want to get to that. Now, remember that Unirenko bars obliterate price action, and they're not going to tell you who's in control of the market like you could, like, like you could see if you traded uh, range bars or time or tick. You're not going to be able to evaluate Japanese candlestick patterns. Uh, I, you're not going to be able to look at an engulfing pattern, a dark cloud cover, uh, a doji, um, a, um, a piercing candle. You're not going to be able to see rising and falling triangles, 
you will be able to see channels. But a lot of the price action that you see is going to be lost when you trade Uniranko. And the thing is, is, is that Uniranko does filter out noise. And as long as you have powerful leading indicators that signal an entry, they do create superior trading opportunities. And what I want to just talk to you about for just a couple of seconds is how we're, the whole market is shifting and that the way we trade today is not the way that we could trade say 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Um, prior to the domination of, of, of price movement by institutional trading, uh, the market was a lot different. I mean, if you go back to 1957, when, when, um, uh, when David Lane created uh, the, the first real indicator, uh, w w which was the stochastic, uh, the market was really dominated by the small um, the small commercial trader like us. Now, the, the, the supposition that was made in the market by all traders at that time was that the power of every bull was essentially equivalent to the power of every bear. And back in those days, that was the case. There was no algorithms, no big bank money, no computers that were switched on that sent crude oil up 75 ticks. Essentially, it was just a bunch of small traders all fighting against each other, determining the, the, the direction of price. Now, back in those days, things like Japanese candlestick patterns, uh, Elliott Wave, GAN theory, I mean, even for me, Fibonacci um, really had a significant degree of relevance. I mean, uh, Gann and, Bo and Elliot both made the, 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 the supposition that there was an intrinsic waveform inherent in the way price moved in the market based on the fact that the power of every bull was equal to the power of every bear. When the Japanese created Japanese candlestick patterns 400 years ago, they really made that same supposition that the forces on each side um, of, of any, uh, uh, you know, of any effort were equal. But that is just not the case anymore. And now that we have big money controlling the market. If we're in a, if we're in a, uh, a uh, uh, the third wave of an Elliott wave pattern, or we're looking at uh, an engulfing candle, or we're looking at uh, uh, a GAN theory pattern, those are all going to be destroyed when institutional money steps in and just plows the market forward. It changes everything. And so we have to change the paradigm via which we trade. And if we're continuing to trade oscillator divergence, MACD divergence, things that worked way back in the day, um, we're going to get beaten up. If you try to call a top or try to call a bottom, you will not make money. And there's very few things I can guarantee, but that's one thing I can guarantee. Because I have looked for 20 years for a mathematical way to define a top or a bottom, and there isn't any. Your, a top is going to occur only when institutional money steps aside, and then the market's going to fall back. If it's making a big move up, it'll fall. If institutional money is pushing the market down, it will go down. And you can rem and remember that the market can stay overbought or oversold for minutes, hours, days, weeks, for months. So if you think that an oscillator is going to call a top or a bottom or any mathematical formula, and an oscillator is a mathematical formula, is going to tell you when the market's topped out or bottomed out, you are, I'm telling you, you're wrong. And I'm here to try to get you into a, a mindset that's going to create uh, a, a, a trade methodology methodology for you that's going to make you profitable. 
and not catch you on the wrong side of a trade. So trying to trade tops and bottoms, and, and I know that there are other mentors, and I say this with all due respect, who tell you that you can trade tops or bottoms, you're not gonna make money doing it. So I kind of started with a little bit of negatives, but I want you to understand what's operational in the markets today and what we need to do in order to make money. And obviously that's our goal. We want to be success. We want to be successful traders. We don't want to be caught on the wrong side of a trade. And remember one other thing. The big institutional money, they are all, the big institutional traders will always make money. You can only take money from the other small retail traders. They're either going to take it from you or you're going to take it from them. If you have a trade methodology that's, that is effective and you have discipline and patience, you will go home with their money. If you don't have a trade methodology that works and you don't have patience and discipline, they will go home with your money. The one thing that is always consistent is that the big money traders, the banks and institutions will always profit. And we just duke it out every day in the market with the other little guy. And unfortunately, it's a battlefield and we want to go home with that other guy's money. Let me just pass. So what we do is we also make a couple of other assumptions, and that is indicators that analyze price from your trading chart will have no predictive value as to how price is going to move off the right, right edge of the chart. They all lag and nothing leads. If you have a MACD that trades off your trading chart, it's useless. An oscillator is useless. There is no indicator analyzing price action off your trading chart that's going to help you make money. And there are only four parameters present on every chart. There's the high, low, and open and close of every candle formation or every formation and volume. Those five parameters are the only thing that's present. There's nothing hidden. There's no secret uh, things that, are, that, that you may think are between the lines. What we have to do, though, is create indicators that analyze the information that's present on the chart that give us the ability to determine how price is going to move off the right edge. And the first thing that we do is we disconnect the indicator assessment from our trading chart. We only want to look at the two higher time frames, and that creates what's known mathematically as an independent assessment. If we link the indicator to our trading chart, it confounds the assessment and decreases the precision of the indicator assessment. So the first one that we're gonna look at is order flow. And I really like order flow and I like trading with it, but it's a very difficult uh, parameter to use and it's, 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 kind, it's sort of twitchy. And in addition, there's, there is information here that we cannot read. And let me show you an example. Every single candle, and it doesn't matter whether it's an open high, you know, a high, low close. When I look at a candle, I look at any formation that you want to trade with. And like I said, it could be time, tick, and it doesn't have to be in a, in, in a candlestick. Um, but it's going to create a market delta. And the market delta here is 229.85. And all this looks at, now this, each of these is a price level. If you're trading stocks, it's in cents. If you're trading uh, Forex, it's in pips. And if you're trading futures, it's in ticks. And it's looking at the number of buyers sitting at the bid, sitting at the ask, and looking at how many traders are looking to buy versus how many are looking to sell. Now you would think that if there's a lot more traders looking to buy, 
on that single candle, there'd be a significant amount of buying pressure. And you can see that with at 2,985, there's 2,985 more buyers than there are sellers. This does not look at executed trades or executed sales. It simply looks at the number of buyers and sellers sitting on the dome. Now, we have the information in the indicator to project stack sellers and stack buyers, but it doesn't have the predictive power we need, so we eliminate it. So here's the problem. You can have a positive delta, which would tell you that there's significant buying pressure, but the candle can close to the downside. So if a positive delta can create a down candle, how the heck are we supposed to use this as a predictor of how price is going to move? And in addition, why did this happen? Now here's why it happens. The delta simply gives you the absolute value of the difference between the number of buyers and number of sellers sitting on the dome. It tells you nothing about their aggressiveness. And in this particular case, these sellers were just far more aggressive than the buyers. And to give you an example, let's say that, that a financial instrument is sitting in a price of 50. And it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, it's sitting at 50 bucks. And the buyers are only willing to buy it at 50.1. But the sellers are willing to take it off their hands at 49.9, 49.8, 49.7. The sellers are so convinced that this financial instrument is gonna go down and they're so aggressive in their, in their selling that the fact that there are more buyers on the dome is overdriven by the aggressiveness of the sellers. Now, I know a million software systems that use market delta as a predictor of how price is going to move, like this. And what they do is they look at the absolute value of the delta, and when it's rising, it predicts that price is going to rise. And when you get a dip, like this, it predicts that the market's going to fall. Unfortunately, off the right edge, it has no predictive value. Because like, you, like I just showed you, a positive delta can be associated with a down candle. Now, how do we get out of this bind if we want to use um, a, volu uh, a, a, a volume ladder and we want to use the market delta? And it does, can, it does provide us with a lot of good information, but we have to filter out some of the noise. And what we found is that one standard deviation's worth of data works. And when aggressiveness comes into, into effect, changing the direction like this 222 is a down candle and this 1464 plus is a down candle. In order to eliminate those kind of things from affecting our, our analysis, we only use one standard deviation's worth of data, and that kicks out the outliers. Now, I hope I haven't lost you, because all we're trying to do is, is 66 and two-thirds percent of the time, the market delta is gonna call the correct direction of the candle, and we want to eliminate the outliers, and that provides us with a powerful directional analysis based on market delta. So here's what we do. We don't, for our order flow assessment, we don't look at the delta of, the can, of anything on the trading chart. We look at the delta of the candles on the two higher time frames. Now, I put here higher multiple Unirenko's, but that if you're trading time, let's say you're trading a two minute uh, time chart. Uh, this would look at the six minute and the 18 minute. Two times three, six. Three times higher, 18. If you're trading a five range, it's gonna look at the two higher fib numbers, eight and 13 range. Um, you know, if you're trading a one hour, it's gonna look at the three hour and the nine hour. 
and totally eliminate the analysis off your trading chart. And what we do is we put the market delta values into a 15 period simple moving average. And that moving average smooths out the values. So the delta is actually the summation of the last 15 values. So those, so that one or two value, those one or two values or those deltas that close in the opposite direction in which the, in, in which the candle closes are really eliminated. So the slope of this 15 period SMA really gives you a very accurate assessment of who's in control of the market, the bulls or the bears. And because it doesn't use any data off your trading chart, but off the two higher time frames, it provides you with a great analysis as a leading indicator. And when both 15 period SMAs are sloping up, the, the bulls are firmly in control and the order flow assessment line is gonna be green. And when both 15 period SMAs are sloping down, the bears are in control and the line's gonna be red. When the 15 periods are not in agreement, it's gonna be yellow. And I just wanna throw in one little, one little other thing. It's a takeaway and I wanna to try to make this educational, not just show you my software, which I do like, and I'm, I'm gonna show you how we're doing this month, which is, which is stellar off of it, is that it's our goal as day traders, swing traders, whatever trader you are, your number one goal is not to get winners. My son, who doesn't know what he's doing, could sit here and get a winner. The goal of a, of a trader is to avoid losers. If you can sidestep a loser with a great degree of precision, you are going to make a ton of money and you're going to be amazingly successful. Every trader who's ever sat behind a computer and held a mouse in their hand gets a ton of winners. But the reason that 95% or more of day traders and swing traders go off the cliff is because as part of their analysis, they pull in so many losers, they wind up blowing their account. So what we want to do is trade with an amazing degree of specificity. Our goal is to sidestep losers and the winners will come. Trust me, they will. Now here is the analysis just based on order flow with those two 15 periods sloping in one direction or the other. Excuse me. I get these scam calls. They probably want to sell me a a a, 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 a timeshare in um, uh, in Vietnam. Anyway, when order flow when the order flow line is green, you have to go long. When order flow is red, you have to trade short. Now let me show you. You see the traders in this down candle. What are they doing? Um, they're trading oscillator divergence, MACD divergence, whatever trade methodology they're, they're using, they're calling the top. And you see, they just get run right over. You don't ever want to be one of these traders again. Even these four candles. I'm going to show you other, other ways that we trade in our, our full trade methodology. You can't trade short here. The only thing you can look for is a long trade in the direction of order flow. Here's another example. Now I'm gonna show you off a live chart that order flow leads price. It's coming off the two higher time frames. This line's gonna turn green before price turns. So as price falls, the order flow line will go green and the next pivot up is your long trade. And then you're always gonna get these counter trend traders who we love. I mean, they're really misguided, but we need them and they help us. Why do they help us? Because when we take this pivot up, 
we run them over. And when we run them over and stop them out, they help push our trade to the upside. So we always hope that they're traders who want to counter trend trade, trade against the direction of order flow, so we can move in on the next up candle in the direction of order flow, stop them out, and they'll help us push the trade up. Same thing again. Green, up, yellow, don't trade, it's chop. Red, down, green, up. I'm gonna show you this, I'm gonna show you this on a live chart. And the reason I'm trying to move so quickly is I wanna to get to show you a live chart. Now it really defines chop really well. Now remember, this is one of three lines. But when it's constantly changing color, and the bulls and the bears are constantly changing hands, excuse me, you're gonna get chop. And defining chop is our number one goal, because our number one goal is to avoid losers. Now, this, this is a little bit out of order, and I keep forgetting. Now, the, the second is the, the assessment of momentum. And again, what we do is we ignore momentum on our trading chart and look to work to higher time frames. Now there's a lot of ways to assess momentum. You can use Heikinashi momentum, oscillators create a decent momentum uh, analysis, and I'm sure there are other ways of looking at momentum. But I really like MACD as an assessment of momentum because of the crossover. And the analysis takes into account this crossover, although I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, because if, because if I did, I'd spend an hour discussing how the MACD uh, line is assessed or the momentum line. But what we look at is only the two higher time frames. We unlink this assessment from your trading chart. And what we do is when both, and this momentum should be MACD, when both MACD lines are accelerating away from the signal line, your momentum line is going to be green. And when both MACD lines are accelerating towards the signal line, it's going to be red. Now, I haven't gone into the MACD crossover, but that crossover is part of the assessment. I just don't want to hone this down into the minutia or it's going to become overly complicated and cumbersome. Um, but if you come aboard, you, I, will, I will bring you up to speed on all of that. Now, when the, when the MACD lines are not in agreement, you're going to get a yellow line. And now we're going to combine them. So now what you need is red, red, order flow, and momentum. It's a multi-time frame assessment unlinked from your trading chart. And here's the key. Most software, when you see green, green, or a green background, is created because price on your trading chart is rising. So it, who cares? What we want to know is something, that, is something that's created off of the higher time frame so that price rises because these lines are green. These lines are not green because price is rising. It's sort of a reversal in role. So when the lines are red, red, you have to be short. And when they're green, green, you can only trade long. Same thing here. Now it's easier to define chop. You don't have red, red or green, green. Here you do. Red, red, here's green, green. Here's red, red, and here's green, green. Now, when order, when order flow and momentum stay green, green, this is a big institutional move. I mean, it's an algorithmically generated trade, of either a bank or a large institution. They've created the situation where order flow continues to stay green, momentum continues to it, the, that MACD line continues to accelerate away from the signal line on the higher time frames. 
And you can see, you can capture huge moves. And if, you, if you're the kind of trader that looks for a runner, and there's nothing wrong with that methodology, you just stay in the trade. Now, I told you the analysis was a little more complex. Inside this move, some of these candles have, have a neutral assessment. And again, if you, if you do come aboard, I'm going to tell you why. But that is not a signal to leave the trade. The signal to leave the trade is when these lines go red. And when they go red, you, that's when you exit. And now it's easier to define chop. Our number one goal in trading, avoid taking a trade in a choppy market. Because the prevalence, and prevalence is a mathematical term for getting a winner here, is very low. We only want to trade in a trending market. Now, the third is stochastic. And it's a bounded indicator, and I like its assessment. And it's, again, a little more complex, but I'm, I'm, I'm basically uh, show you the nuts and bolts of the stochastic assessment. Now, when the stochastic line is overbought, and this is always on your two higher multiple time frames, it's never off your trading chart, it's always on the two higher. And the indicator algorithm just looks at the speed of your chart. You know, if you have it on a five range, it knows to go to an eight and a 13. If you're trading a one hour, it knows to go to a three hour and a nine hour. So when the stochastic line is greater than 80, the mistake that most traders look at is they look to fade the market. What we look to do we, is we make the assessment that only institutional money can drive this line above 80 and keep it there. So our stochastic assessment is green. We want to go in the direction of institutional money. When the stochastic line goes below 20 and stays there on the two higher time frames, you're looking at significant selling pressure. And I don't want to go into the, in, into the stochastic formula or what's going on here, but this is really a measure of price acceleration to the downside or price acceleration to the upside. The stochastic indicator looks at a second order metric, which is acceleration. So that, that's why I like it and that's why I made it part of the three line. Now, when the stochastic is between 20 and 80, it's the relationship between the percent K line and the signal line that determines whether the analysis is green or red. When the percent K line is above the signal line, it's green. When the percent K line is below the signal line, it's red. And when the stochastic lines are not in agreement, the line is yellow, and that's when you don't trade. So now we have three lines. So now before I go any further, what I, what I want to do is tell you that we want to make this easier. So what we do, when all three lines are in place, the assessment can become confusing. Remember that all three are making their assessment intracandle. So they're changing. And if it's a really rapidly moving market, or if, if it's a very volatile market, uh, you don't want to have to have your cursor over three lines because it, it's, a, it's a pain. And what, we, what I want you to do and what I want to do is only focus on price. So what we do is we project the results of the three line directly into the candle halo to make the assessment easy. So now it looks like this. Now I choose to make the candle halo green when order flow stochastic and momentum are aligned to the upside. And I make it this thick. You can make this thickness and color. You can make it any color you like or any thickness you like. But 
you can see that this down candle is the harbinger of an up move. And that first up pivot is the long pivot. Now, there's the trader caught in the counter trend direction. I thought I showed you the slide before, and you go long. Now here, you don't have an alignment of order flow stochastic and momentum. So you have to stand down. And one of the problems with, it, with trading with a great degree of specificity is some winning trades you're gonna have to let go. But that's the price you pay for sidestepping almost every loser. It's, a, it's, just, it's, just a, it's a mathematical axiom that if you want to try to avoid every loser, there are some winning trades you just won't get into. And sometimes it's really aggravating because I trade live every morning and we'll get trades that just don't align. We can't get in and they, and they move a lot. But if you try to chase a trade like that, ultimately you're gonna wind up getting beaten up. Just because it worked once doesn't mean it's gonna work the majority of times. You can't have FOMO, which is fear of missing out. All you can do is make the market come to you. Never chase the market. Now, I don't recommend you call the top, but this is a top caller calling trade, but order flow now is aligned to the downside. Order flow stochastic in momentum. Order flow stochastic in momentum. And you can see price falls. Remember, price always wants to regress to the mean. And I'll show you that later. That's a powerful force. And that's what all these top and bottom callers are using. The problem is, is you just can't tell when the market's going to turn. Here's another example. And you can see that the candle before the up candle is haloed in gold, which tells you that order flow stochastic and momentum have already turned. So this candle is pretty much doomed. It's not going to continue. And if you get the next candle down, you're going to take it. Now we trade the overall trend and I don't have price, I don't have market structure here, but you're not going to take these three candles long. You're going to wait for the down candle to run these long traders over. And when I show you the full chart and I show you market structure, it's, it's really very intuitive and very easy to see. Again, here's a long candle created with order flow stochastic and momentum to the downside. It's another doomed group of traders trying to trade long. And, and we love this because when we take the down pivot, which is haloed in gold, we're gonna run these long traders over and it's gonna help this market move to the downside. We're trading in the direction of institutional money. And here's the most important point I, I, I want to make is that the only thing that, the, that can create order flow stochastic and momentum aligned on a multi time frame basis, all aligned in the same direction, is big money. This is very unlikely to occur when just a small trader like you and I are trading. We're going to trade chop, we're, and we're going to create chop. And it's the inherent desire of the market to move and chop because that's the inherent way all closed systems move. They tend to move to a state of maximum randomness. I mean, that's one of the laws of thermodynamics and the market is no different as a closed, as a closed system. The only thing that creates order in the market is big money. And we want to track that big money. So off the right edge of the chart, we know exactly the direction that price is going to move. Now, we can make the workspace even cleaner because, because if the candle halo 
It's all the data we need. Why even bother to look at the three line? We want to focus on price. We don't want to be always looking below the chart. So I eliminate it. You know, a lot of traders want to see it. And they can look, and you can look at it if you want. But I make it transparent and I get rid of it. And now I have to go back to the slide that we're out of order, and I don't know how they got out of order. You, you, but you can see now there's no three line. All you look at is the candle halo. And it makes the assessment really simple. And here's the next one, the same slide, but I just eliminated the three line. So it becomes really simple. You just focus on price. You don't have to focus on three changing lines. Now, what I'm gonna do now, let me see what time it is. I'm going to take this now. And what I want to do, and you, you're going to rarely see anyone do this, but I'm going to show you our profit loss for the month. We're up for the month, 3,115 $3, bucks. Now this is my Ninja Trader back end. I cannot fake this or fudge this or play with this. This is from the live trading room, which I trade every morning. You know, it's not one of those um, phony gurus who make 7,542% in eight minutes. Um, you know, this, this, is, this, is, this is real. And so far, uh, halfway through November, we're up 31.15. Uh, the trading percentage is just under 80%. And that's, and that's actually inaccurate because the way NinjaTrader does the assessment, uh, if you have a runner that doesn't make any money and it comes back and it's taken out at break even, they call that break even runner, they take it out of your winners. It's really not a loser but they subtract it out of your winners. Plus, on a loser, what, if that runner comes back and gives you one tick of slippage, and sometimes we get slippage on the runner, it comes back and we have it set to stop at break even, but it stops at minus a tick, or minus a cent, or minus a pip, so it's booked as a loser. And that's happened three times. So three of those 19 contracts, which are booked as losers, are not losers. And these three are not part of a losing trade either. That's six. If you add that here, we're way over 80%. So the great job we've done is to avoid losers. Now this month, I had one really difficult day that I created myself in a low volume, low, vol low volatility market. And the majority of my losers came in one day. But I believe we've made money every other day, but last Monday. And that's, those are real numbers. And I would challenge anybody else to do that. Now here's the software. And we're gonna, Look at it. Now, there's certain, I mean, if you come aboard, and I hope you do, we're going, I'm going to show you the, the, uh, the different kind of trades. You know, and I, you know something, I didn't even talk to you about the exponential oscillator. And I'm trying to rush so fast, I'm, I'm starting to leave leave myself in the dust here. We use an exponential oscillator to help us get optimal entries. Every time the oscillator crosses the 50 line to the upside, you get an up triangle. Every time it crosses the 50 line to the downside, you get a down triangle. 
And these help us get really good entries. And there's two other indicators that I still haven't talked to you about that I only wanted to show you off of a live chart. Now, if we're looking at the multi time frame assessment of the order flow stochastic and momentum, how about the multi time frame assessment of the instrument we're trading? It can be crude oil, it can be a stock, it can be, it can be a Forex market. It doesn't matter. The only, almost the only time I trade is when this background bias is pink or when this background bias is green. And what that shows us is that we have a super powerful multi time frame analysis in this case of crude oil to the upside. This is the sweet spot to trade. If you're higher time frames, now the analysis is complex because we have, whoops, we have three different colored ups cyan up. We have green is up, and we also have light green, which is up. Now, all of this analysis is off the two higher time frames, not your trading chart. I'm sorry, it's blue. Jeez, I keep hitting the wrong button, I'm sorry. So you have three power, there's three different powers of the uptrend. And I'm not gonna go into those either, or you're, or you're gonna get lost in the minutia in this particular um, webinar. And we have three different powers of a downtrend. And the only time I'm gonna take a trade is when I have green or, or a dark pink background. That's when the likelihood of getting a winner is extremely high. Second are the pivots. And pivots are very important. And our pivots are unlike any other pivots I've seen. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna represent that we're the only software system that has them, but I can tell you that this is the only software system that I've seen that has them. Now pivots based on Japanese candlestick dogma are created by the candle body, not by the wick. And if you see this turn here, it's created by the candle body, not by the wick. That's the real place a pivot should be. And this is where there are a lot of sellers. And you see the price challenged it here and turns. And I never trade into an unbroken pivot. There's a, now this is not a trade, but there's a move up, it hits the pivot, and it gets rejected. It happens all day. It's that pivots reject price. And if you want the sweetest trades with the lowest risk, and that's our goal, our goal is not to get every winner, it's to avoid every loser. You're never gonna trade into an unbroken pivot. The other thing about this pivot indicator that's different than the rest is that based on Japanese candlestick dogma, a pivot is only broken when two thirds of a candle body closes above the long, closes above this set of buyers in this pivot to resi a re resistance. That's what snaps the pivot. A little piece of price above, like this candle, hasn't done it. This candle hasn't done it. As you can see, the pivot is still tracing. This would be our entry candle. Because this is, does two things. It not only snaps the pivot, it causes all the sellers in this pivot to start to get stopped out. And it starts to push price to the upside. And remember, in every trade, we want to leverage counter trend traders. So those are the three additional indicators that I didn't include in the deck. I have slides for them. I just forgot to add them. But it's best to see them off a live chart anyway. Now, this was a trade that happened on Friday. Now, we snapped the pivot right here on this candle 
but we couldn't take it because you can see the candles haloed in black. Now, when I trade, I trade with this closed. I don't want to see it. All I want to see are the candle halos. But what we do, what if, we have three configurable trade entries. One is a pullback. And there's the entry. And that was a 60 pick trade. And they come like that. The 50 is up. The 15 is up. These are exponential moving averages and they're actually proprietary. This is a 50 exponential of 50, of a 50 exponential. This is a 15 exponential of a 15 exponential. And if you put just a simple 15 exponential over it, you're gonna see this line moves much better. It moves with the same speed, with, but with much greater stability. What does the wick show us? The wick shows us that this was a bear failure. The bears tried to turn the market. They created this wick. So we know that we got a lot of sellers in the wick, the sellers in the candle. So we take the trade, one tick above the close, never intracandle. If you trade intracandle, you do, I'm telling you, I hate to say like you're doomed, but I don't think it's a viable way to trade in my, in my humble opinion. And, and there's your entry on crude. Now I wanna show you a whole bunch of different instruments and I can show you a whole bunch. When there's no background and they have mo no multi-time frame alignment, you can see the oscillator calls a long winner here. The oscillator calls a long winner here. You can see the, the triangle, but I'm not trading them because they don't occur. They don't, the entries are not low risk entries. And just the fact that it made it this time does not mean it's gonna make it the next time. But the oscillator, the exponential is a really good entry tool. And that's another entry. Besides the pullback, we have the triangles. Now this is simply the stochastic formula raised to the second power. It gives it a lot more speed. And you can see right here is a trade, but we can't trade it because we're sitting right above pivot support. But this is the best trade. I'm telling you, this is the juiciest trade you're gonna get. You get a break of the pivot here and a pullback. I love these trades. I would be in this trade any day of the week. And that's a very nice winner. For us, that's a full winner. We're only looking for 15 ticks and then we're looking for a re-entry to go back in a second time. I don't care what happens here, I'm not trading any of this. I'm not trading anything, but this deep, uh, this dark pink, and this trade is just oversold. And I'll talk to you about an over, overbought, oversold market. And it's, I don't wanna go into too much minutia here, but it's based on the space between the 50 and the 15. It's not based on any oscillator or mathematical metric. It's based on an analysis of a year's worth of market data that tells us when the, when the space between the 50 and the 15 widens too much the probability of getting a winning trade begins to diminish significantly. Now, I didn't show you this trade, I don't think, but that's another winner. This one is tradable, it's BISC background. And it's not the most powerful, but I love the size of the wick. Yeah, and, and, and the power of this is, and I'm giving you what the trade methodology, which is a, more than I want to do here. You're trading off an up candle. So you have a ton of buyers trapped and you've got an oscillator signal. See the triangle? Candles haloed in magenta, order flow stochastic in momentum, very low risk winner. Now let me, let me show you a, um, and, then I'm, and, then, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the offer. Hang on one second. Uh, I, let me close this. Let me make sure my stock data feed is attached and I'll show you a stock. Because it doesn't really make any difference. I just connected it. And I, I, don't want, I do want to show you the offer. 
So let, let's just put in any stock. Uh, I don't know, something that's really volatile. And um, I'll put in Facebook. I don't, I don't know how that traded recently. You gotta wait for it to load. Now, now here's Facebook. Have you got it? I just wanna bring up the oscillator. because The oscillator I watch. And um, we, would, we would have to change the, 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 the size of the Urenko candle because you're not gonna trade Facebook on a 2510. You're gonna trade it on a 41020. And again, I don't wanna get into too much minutia, but you're gonna get all of these as pre-configured templates. I mean, it's just too fast. And uh, we'll look for an entry. And we may get one and we may not. Now, this is not much of an entry here, but this is on blue background. That's why I don't trade it. Here's your entry right here. Green background, pullback. Order flow stochastic momentum aligned, and up you go. And I'm telling you, you're going to get these all day. Now, if you if you buy an, a, a, an at the money call here, you're going to get about a buck on the trade, based on this time frame. I mean, you can I'd like I, I just don't have time. I only have three minutes. I don't have time to show you this on a two minute, a five minute, a ten minute. But I just want you to know. This is time frame independent, so it, and it is instrument independent. These are universal forces that drive price. When you have a multi time frame alignment in the trend of the instrument you're trading, and a multi time frame alignment of order flow, stochastic, and momentum, and you have the and you have either an oscillator entry, a pullback, or a break of a pivot, the trade's going to run. And you saw my performance for the week uh, on, um, for the month of November on the system. I mean, if, if I continue along this path, we'll make $6,000 this month. And we only trade two contracts or three contracts. That's a very small number. If you want to trade five or 10, you could have made an enormously larger amount of money but I keep the contract number small so that everybody in the room can follow me. And it doesn't make any difference whether you, whether you start with a small account or you start with a big account. So let me just go to the offer. I don't even know if I'm gonna get a chance to, to go to questions. Um, that's the problem I have, but I do wanna show you the offer because it's a really good one. And I, I'm gonna go through it really quick because I wanna show you what we've added here. Now, it's $497 for the system for a lifetime license. And it comes with a ton of stuff. It comes with, um, uh, we, do the, we do the complete installation. You don't have to worry about anything. It, 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 I mean, Sergio has a master's degree in computer programming, is full time here, and we're all here all the time. So you, you can come in and we'll work with you on it. You will we'll format it for you for stocks, futures, Forex, whatever you want. The, the most important thing is you get six months of, of my elite trading newsletter. And I'm telling you, I'm a really good options trader. There are a lot of good traders out there, and I like to consider myself one of them. These, this was the last newsletter I just sent out. I just wanted to show you what it looks like, and, just, and I, don't want to run, I don't want to run over. I got, look, if you give me, I'll just give you 60 seconds. I closed Lululemon. I had a, a bull call spread. I, I, I told everyone to get in at 460 and close at 605. We made 31% simply because it hit its profit target too soon. I also, I also trade micro cap and small cap biotechs that are coming up for their phase two or phase three approval. I work with four professors at the University of Miami, one in, one in hematology, oncology, immunology, gastroenterology, and uh, neurology, Fomix was the first um, uh, company to create uh, a topical 
minocycline cream to treat uh, acne. This was, at a, this was a five plus dollar stock. It had merged with Menio Therapeutics and got crushed. We still sold it at 345 and we, we bought it at 290. We were up almost 100% on it when it, when it got, when, when it merged. I just recommended a, um, a, call, a call on Sony. I have a spread on Microsoft and I have a spread on innovative industrial properties. That's the best pot stock I believe that exists. It's already hit its profit target. It filled at 205 and on Monday we're gonna close it. Um, the trade updates, a quest of therapeutics, it ran away from me. I wanted to get it at 450, I tried to get it at five, it's now about 550. Apple, I tried to get a bull call spread on, ran away from me. Uh, we're gonna get into Old Dominion Freight. And these are the, this is the portfolio. I have Alba Marley, the biggest zinc miner in the world. It's, it's a leap. It expires in, 20, in 2021. Um, it's trading right around 70. Lulamon is already gone. I have a bull call on Visa and a bull call on Phillips 60 cents. You're gonna get six months six month of, of my calls. And I take all of these with my own money and I bust my case on them. So if you're interested in the system, you can call us right now at 786-732-4656, Skype us at Right Line Trading, or send an email to info at rightlinetrading.com. I'm really sorry I can't get into questions. Everyone here has been very kind to me and uh, I don't wanna um, uh, run, over, run over time. But this six months of the elite trader, um, is, it, it normally goes for this price. And we'll give that to the first 10 orders. So thank you so much for having me. I hope I didn't confuse anyone. I hope you understand the system. Um, there's a tremendous amount of education associated with it. Um, I will work with you. Our staff will work with you. You're getting an image, a million educational videos, and you're going to get up to speed on exactly how to trade it. And let's see if together you and I can't make $6,000 a month trading just a few contracts a day um, in the market. It doesn't matter whether you trade stocks or Forex. You can still come aboard and learn this system. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. We really appreciated the fact that you took time off your busy schedule to uh, present to our audience. Uh, so everyone, thank you here for spending this Saturday with us. Um, and uh, basically with this concludes our today's event. The event was recorded and the recordings will be posted on the timingresearch.com website. Uh, from all of us here uh, at Trade Out Loud and Timing, Re uh, uh, timing Research, uh, we would like to wish you to have a great rest of the day and a very profitable trading week ahead. So uh, have a good uh, rest of the day, everyone. Happy weekend and uh, hope to see you guys soon our, at our next presentation. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care, Anna. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Mark.